What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of our weekly video game updates, um, which contains all sorts of patches, updates, hotfixes, news, and more. Uh, this week is October, or not October, god damn, I'm like four months ahead. Uh, it's June 11th, so it's the week of June 10th. So we'll be covering everything that we that's happened in the last week for updates and uh, patches and whatnot. Uh, the last update we did was for June 4th, which was a week ago from today. Uh, so we'll be covering, of course, all updates that happen and then the updates are being announced and released for today and tomorrow and Thursday, technically. So we've already covered most of uh what we normally do for like Call of Duty, we saw all their updates and releases last week. Uh, they have new ones that came out today. We'll also be addressing World of Warcraft's hot fixes and patches that have released over the last actually like three days, four days, and then the big one today that they updated. Uh, we'll also touch base on the update for Destiny 2 since uh, the final shape has came out. So we'll touch that. Uh, along with we will do a what's the best way but we're going to do kind of like a random one at the end where it's it's they're not random hodgepodge collection i guess would be the best way to put it as it's just going to be a collection of quick information concerning maybe some recent announcements releases or uh quick fixes that got applied to some video games or just uh little small updates in general so without further ado let's get into today's update uh, if you're needing the timelines for this video i'm going to have them listed down below so if you want to jump to a specific game feel free to do that um, you should also see the timeline on the video as well it should be broken up so where you can do that as well by clicking um, otherwise check the description and as always thank you for watching this episode of two guys one gamepad weekly updates let's get after y'all all right, as you can see with the title down below here, we're talking about Warcraft, uh, talking about hot fixes and patches. Uh, since we did the last update on June 4th, they've released a fairly decent sized one on June 5th, a small one on June 6th, and they're uh, releasing a big patch right now that I shouldn't call it a big patch. They're releasing um final fixes to it which is all maintenance perspective so we're not going to really cover the one today because it doesn't aff it, you're not going to notice it it doesn't affect specific like races or characters or classes it's it's all back office type stuff so we're going to do this and we're going to get into today starting with june 5th update now, this was a hot fix. Hot fixes are different from patches and update. Hot fixes are basically, um, I think I described this in every video. If I haven't, I apologize. Hot fix is where basically the studio goes, oh, all this needs to be fixed instantly. Um, so they push out that same day uh, versus a patch or an update. Patch is going to be like, well, we have a few days or we need to do it this week, which is kind of what like Call of Duty do, does. They do patches and they do the updates updates changes minor things patches are to fix things so um, it's all convoluted honestly they all mean the same thing uh, with the exception of hot fixes which is a daily thing so without further ado let's get into it uh june 5th blizzard released a hot fix um they had one for art and animation so you'd be able to see things a little bit more clearly uh fix an issue causing bow of range captain to be held backwards Fix an issue where Vault of Incarnate Cosmetic Fist Weapon purchased from Bulin were not hidden from Sheath. And fix a bug where the appearance of Tropical Airy Sandals. Again, those are minor little things, but still, like, cosmetic-wise, if you can see it and you notice it, it becomes a, like, annoyance. All right. Next on the classes, and they have kind of a, a decent amount. Um, at least in my opinion. So let's get into it. Classes start off with the Evoker. Preservation. All healing increased by 6% does not apply to PvP combat. Again, PvP is player versus player. PvE, player versus environment. 
Druid, Restoration, Moonfire now costs 0.3% mana. It was 1.2%. All right, next up, Hunter, uh, Survival, Survival Hunter, 4 set focus, cost reduction increased to 20, was 10. Survivor Hunter, 4 set damage bonus increased to 80%, was 50. That's good. That's a good increase. So that's nice. Well, you should notice that pretty, uh, pretty quickly. Or should have noticed it. Um, Paladin, the Holy, Word of Glory, healing increase by 15% does not affect MB PvP combat. Light of Dawn, healing increase by 20%. Oh, wow, that's a good increase. Shaman, Brimman with life now increases maximum health by 10%, was 8%, so 2% increase. Enhancement, Chain Lightning damage increased by 10%. Flame shock damage increased by 10%. Frost shock damage increased by 10%. Fire Nova damage increased by 10%. Crash lightning damage increased by 10%. Primordial waves additional light bolts now deal 175% damage of normal damage was 150. Does not apply in PvP combat. Warlock. Fear now costs 4% of base mana was 5. Demonic Gateway now costs 10% of base mana was 20. On to Dungeons and Raids. Natharius addressed an issue where multiple players can interact with burning chains. Chargath, slag eruption duration reduced to 3 seconds was 4. Fetter duration increased to 15 was 12 seconds. Addressed an issue where canceling Dragon Strike using invisibility will lead to ground chaining not being cast. Oldman, Legacy of Tear. Bromach. Quaking Totem's health reduced by 10%. Emberon addressed an issue where Persian Flames visual does not line up with beam area. Oh, that's a good fix. All right, I'll do player versus player, also known as PvP. Items, Seal of Durana is chosen, will deal 50% reduced damage in PvP combat. Demon Hunter, Havoc, all damage reduced by 4% PvP damage. Or PvP combat, sorry. Demonic Wards now reduces magic damage taken by 5% in PvP combat was 10. So basically the Havoc Demon Hunters got a little nerfed. Druids. Balance. Developers note states, we recently removed the PvP nerf for Frenzy Regeneration primarily to help Feral Druids, but Balance Druids got a windfall and became a little too powerful with this change we're pulling back on this stuff specifically for balanced druids only so their survivability is more in line with everybody else's. That's developer's note. So on continuation of druid balances, frenzy regeneration heals for 5% every second was 8 for balanced druids in PvP combat. Balance of all things will now give the correct amount of critical strike chances in PvP combat when two talent points are invested into it. Still any Druid, Restoration, Wrath damage increase by 50% in PvP combat, Starfire damage increase by 50% in PvP combat, Moonfire damage increase by 80% in PvP combat. Onwards to Hunters, still underneath player versus player updates. So. Hunter, Marksmanship, Sniper Shot, PvP talent, range increase, re er, range increase reduced by 30% was 40%. That reads a little weird. Sniper shot, PvP talent, damage is no longer affected by mastery sniping, sniper training. Paladin, holy, flash of light, healing increased by 12% in PvP combat, judgment damage increased by 30% in PvP combat, hammer of wrath, damage increased by 50% in PvP combat, holy shock damage increased by 20% in PvP combat, glimmer of light damage decreased. By 25% in PvP combat. It was originally uh, 30. Right. Priest. Mental agility now reduced the mana cost of mass dispel, purify, and purify disease by 25% in PvP combat. Was 50%. Oh, that's a big nerf. Holy. Holy's fire. Holy fire's direct damage is now reduced by 20% in PvP combat. The cooldown of Chastis is now reduced by one second per talent point from Voice of Harmony in PvP combat was two seconds. So Priest took a little bit of a, a hit. Um, Rogue, Settled, Subtlety, 
Rapture damage is now increased by 15% in PvP combat. Backstab damage is now increased by 45% in PvP combat. Was 30. Gloom Blade damage is now increased by 45% in PvP combat. Was 30 as well. Onward to quest. Fix an issue during handle it out. Tethicoil or casting Tethicoil rune on valid creatures was not awarding Tethicoil. Tethercoil. Coil. Oh my god, such a tongue twister. Alright. Cataclysm Classics. Fix a bug in Conclave of Wind where players dying could lead to Nazir dropping no loot. Druids. Clear casting will no longer be consumed by Nourish. Developers note on this says this mirrors a change that was originally made in patch 4.0.3a. 4. 4. Nourish is a low cost heal and is intended to be a filler spell. It simply does not feel good to be casting Nourish and having clear casting go off and then spend it on the incoming Nourish. Paladin, this is the last, last hotfix for June 5th. Paladin fix an issue where Paladins could not or could start arena matches with Inquisition or more than zero holy power. And that's just June 5th. We're working our way to current date. Um, and then we have June 6th, which is actually the last update or hotfix. Sorry. Jepido Joy Buzz and his clockwork assistant have received a new shipment of prismatic baubles in stock from the Mad Merchant. They can be purchased during the month of June for a standard price of 250,000 gold. Quest to fix an issue where raid encounters were not granting quest credit for the test Ruin of Shadow Binding. Wow Remix missed the Pandera. And Daria, sorry. Found the missing Sky Admiral Rogers and returned her to her post so the players can continue onward and inward, which is good because that's the quest I actually stopped at because it was messing up. Uh, Cheshalon now spawns as expected in Timeless Isles. Cataclysm Classic fixed an issue that could cause the the brutal and focused assault debuffs in Warsong Gulch and Twin Peak to become misaligned. They also fix an issue preventing players from seeing the siege tank during battle zone after reconnecting from a disconnect. And they don't actually have any other um, hot fixes or patches concerning that uh, or concerning the updates. So I, I will address this again at the end, but August 26th is when War Within releases to everyone. If you pre-purchase, you can be playing the beta of it right now, as I am. If you want to play beta, you can request it from online uh, via Blizzard and maybe get approved, but it's a limited slot. And I can tell you right now, the beta is very clunky feeling. Uh, it's definitely not polished by any means. There's still a lot of issues I'm running into. I've been at it for like a week now, so just bear with them. It's going to happen and they're going to fix it. But uh, we have about two months and a week and a half. Yeah. Two weeks, sorry. Two months and two weeks before War Within releases. So onward to the next game. And again, if you uh, enjoy this, don't forget to subscribe. Stay up to date and turn the bell icon. Let's get after the next game. All right, next game up at hand again, as you can see down below, it's Call of Duty Warzone. Um, so they are, of course, prepping everything still for the release of uh, Black Ops 6, which debuts October 25th. It's available for free on Game Pass, or it's part of Game Pass on day one. Uh, you do get base edition, but if you pre-order, you get more stuff. I will address that at the end of the video. So, but without further ado, Let's get into the June 11th update. There is one, two, three, four, five, six updates in this one. So let's get after it. For multiplayer, they uh, have a UIX update. Um, bugs fix. Deselecting a conversion kit in Gunsmiths will no longer result in a weapon with unintended statistics, statistics and visual properties. Fix the issue causing players to be kicked out back to the main menu while viewing event camos. After action reports will now display the total number of DNA samples collected rather than tier requirements. 
improved performance of navigating custom loadouts in the gunsmith and hovering the critical countdown mastery reward will no longer kick the player to the menu. Next up is modes, infected specifically. Survivors can now earn DNA bomb upon a 25 kill streak. Added six new survivor loadouts that are randomly chosen in each match. They have Haymaker, the Core 45, the Thermobaric Grenade, the Snapshot Grenade, the Portable Radar, Lockwood 680, and the Core 45. Oh, these are loadouts. So that was loadout number one. Second loadout is Lockwood 680 with the Core 45, Drill Charge, Tear Gas, and Deployable Cover. Next loadout added was WSP Swarm. Gutter Knife, C4, Battle Rage, Munition Box. Next loadout was F FR 5.56, the Tier, Proximity Mine, Decoy Grenade, Munition Box. Next loadout they added was Cat AMR, Renetti, Claymore, Stun Grenade, and Munition Box. Last one they updated or added was Riot Shield, Tier, Simtex, Scatter Mine, and Suppression Mine. Then for weapons and attachment, Battle Rifles, Sidewinders, specifically Jack Thunder LMG kit, reverted an unintentional removal of ramping rate of fire property, increased initial rate of fire from 375 RPM to 555 RPM, which is a 30%, a little over 30% increase, decreased rampant rate of fire from 857 RPMs to 780 RPM, minus 9% decrease. Decrease shots required to each ramp rate of fire from 15 to 9. Increase delay before ramp, or sorry, increase delay before ramped rate of fire begins to decay from 250 milliseconds to 350 milliseconds, which is an increase of 40%. Um, in the submachine categories, we have the AMR 9 Jack Atlas conversion kit. Fix an issue causing more damage than intended to be dealt when bullets hit the helmet area of the operator's head. Well, there goes my AMR9 that I use and been just loving. Great, they got nerfed. Uh, shotgun, KV Broadside, Jack Jawbreaker. Fix an issue preventing muzzle attachment from being equipped. For sniper rifles, they have the K90 Car 98K. They removed incompatible CS15 Scarlet Box laser attachment. No stock attachment will no longer cause optics to become obstructed. That's good because that's what I was running into. Okay, then they have the equipment. EMD grenade slash mine, which is a tactical, decreased tracker ping delay from 250 milliseconds to 50 milliseconds, which is a decrease of 80%. Decreased tracker ping radius from 2.5 meters to 0.6 meters, which is a decrease of 75%. Uh, Developer note says, due to the decreased ping radius, operators who are behind covers are no longer pinged by a teammate with an active tracker device, which is good. All right, under kill streaks, the IMS kill streak fixed an issue preventing stat collection for combat record, and Swarm got a fix. Uh, they had to fix an issue causing drones, drones not to patrol the play space on emergency or Tokyo map, while streak. Earn streaks modify as active. Swarm kills now contribute progress towards earning the next kill streak. That's that's a good update. And the last update they released today was for zombies uh, regarding the progression. Decrease week two kills without being hit challenge requirement from 200 to 20. Oh, that's good because I saw that last week. That was ridiculous. <laughs> uh, so. That's all we have for Call of Duty. Again, um, like I said, October 25th, Black Ops 6 comes out. Uh, so there will be, there's a lot of stuff to go with that. There's a lot of updates and new information, movements, so much more we will address. By we, I do mean Rob and I will address as we get closer to October 25th and more information is released right now. We have release date and some gameplay footage. Um, so, but lots of things are coming to change with that. We'll address that in a whole different video because it's a massive amount of data. Onward to the next update of video games. Let's go. All right, and on to Destiny 2 updates. Again, Final Shape just came out last week, June 5th, 6th? That week. Uh, basically, the day of the release of last episode, uh, Final Shape came out. So, this is um, what I would call some like makeup 
on it, just covering it, fixing some minor issues. So there's about 11 or 12 updates or things they fixed in this update. So this is Destiny 2 update 8.0.0.3. Um, and this was released about an hour ago from this recording. So let's get into it. So they have activities, got updates. Uh, Crucible, fix an issue in collision where capturing a zone while at full super energy would slightly reduce your super energy. Uh, the Pale Heart, the sky has now changed in Pale Heart after the event of Salvation Edge being completed. Requires players who have completed the campaign to see this guy being changed. So cosmetics. Fix an issue where the moat counter status UI would sometimes not appear with the moat collection encounter in the impasse location. Fix an issue where certain elements of little mill little minty oh strike would not load upon entering the first area of the abscess. Oh, butcher that one, I know that. All right, then they had campaign, fix an issue in campaign in lost sectors that would prevent combatants and objectives from spawning, fix a crash that could occur during the final encounter of Iconoclasm mission, fix an issue where the art shown in director's dialogue when exiting the final shape campaign was not appearing correctly. Uh, for Onslaught, fix an issue where turret upgrade costs were referencing decoy upgrade costs. Then they had raids and dungeons, Salvation Edge, fix an issue where the Salvation's Edge carries stat tracker did not properly properly increment. Triumphs, fix an issue where stand, strand triumphs added from previous shipped raids had missing strings. And then they had a couple U or had a UI slash UX update for Pathfinder. Fix an issue where Grenade Ascension had an incorrect objective stream. Gameplay investment, or gameplay and investment, sorry. General fix an issue where risky archery emote would cause players to become invisible. Abilities fix an issue where the knock em dead aspect was not increasing the number of projectile fired by Blade of Barrage. Blade Barrage, sorry. Fix an issue where Blade Fury Super was not granting woven mail to nearby allies in PvP with the into the fray aspect equipped fix an issue where players weren't granted a prismatic subclass if they missed a required cinematic uh, they are still investigating this issue where players do not unlock prismatics if they play the transmigration mission with a player who has already unlocked it that's kind of a big deal armor fix an issue where players could bypass lucky pants cooldown by unequipping and re-equipping the army armor Fix an issue with an incorrect description for armed reach armor mod. And then lastly, weapons. Fix an issue where non denouement bow had the wrong damage profile. Fix an issue where uh, Magnificent Howl could be active for an extended duration. Fix an issue where the cost of purchasing the legendary version of the Kvostov 7G-0X from collections was lower than intended. So not a lot of updates, unlike last week, where fuck, that was like an hour's worth of the updates. So uh, onward to kind of like the the randomness, the pure, yeah, you'll see. But that's all the Destiny 2 updates. Uh, so let's roll in to the last segment of this video. All right, on to the last portion of this video. Um, and I'm going to try to do this kind of the first or second week of each month's recording. I mean, basically what we're going to do is cover any big news information that may have came out if we did do an individual video for it, along with uh, just talk about the releases coming out for that month as well. So we're currently in June. Uh, what I'm going to do is cover June and July's and the next month. I'm going to reiterate July's and then also do August. That makes sense. The month we're in the next month as well. So if you didn't already see our previous episode, uh, Click up in the top right hand corner, it will take you there. Um, it should be at the beginning of this video. If it's not, it's going to be around this segment. Uh, but basically, it's talking about the Summer Game Fest 2024 that just took place last week, along with uh, Xbox's showcase. And uh, we're going to cover a little bit of themes that's going on right now. Uh, but this is all up in the air. Technically, there are some updates, there are some minor stuff. So as always, just kind of take this with a grain of salt as this information can become, uh, I don't want to say convoluted, but can change on the drop of a dime. 
Uh, but as I said at the beginning of this, World of Warcraft has a video game coming or has their latest DLC update, which is War Within. It's currently in beta right now. You can play it again if you pre-ordered it or you gain access from requests. But uh, that comes out August 26th. And then we have Call of Duty's Black Ops 6 comes out um, October 25th. We're going to do a whole different video or a whole nother video specifically for Black Ops 6. So if you're interested in that, definitely don't forget to hit the like, subscribe button, turn the bell icon on to make sure you're getting notified about it because that update is coming and it's going to come a lot sooner than you think. As October is what, two, four, four and a half months away. So we're closing in really quick. So, but let's get into it for June's. All right, for June's releases, scroll down. That is May. There we go. Of course, we had Final Shape for, for Destiny 2 came out on June 4th. Kill, Killer Clowns from Outer Space came out June 4th, along with Star Wars Hunter. Uh, sorry, let me... Destiny came out on all platforms. Killer Clowns from Outer Space came out on uh, PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Star Wars Hunter came out on mobile and Switch on June 4th. We have Octopath Travel Travelers 1 and 2. Um, 1 came out on PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. 2 came out on Xbox Series X and Xbox One. Assassin's Creed Mirage came out on iOS on June 6th. Simpler Time came out on PC June 7th. Kimura's A Frog's Refuge came out on Xbox, Switch, and PC June 8th. Rocket Knight Adventure Respark came out on PlayStation Switch and PC June 11th, so today, or the recording anyways. V Rising comes out on PlayStation 5 today. Taskmaster VR uh, comes out on Quest 3, Quest 2, and PC June 13th. Monster Hunter Stories and Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin, will come out on PlayStation 4 and Switch. Sorry, one will come out on PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC on June 14th. Two, Wings of Ruin, will come out on PlayStation 4, June 14th. Shin Megami Tensai V Vengeance comes out on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC June 14th. Hashtag Blued, B-L-U-D, comes out on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on June 18th. Still, awake, still Wakes the Deep, PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC June 8th. Dice Folk came out on the Switch June 20th. Five Nights of Freddy's Help Wanted Number two, uh, PlayStation VR 2 comes out on June 20th. Disto Dystopica comes out on PC June 21st. Elden Ring Shadow of the Air Tree comes out on PlayStation 5. Xbox, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC June 24th. Cozy Cove Grove Camp Spirit is a mobile game, so iOS and Android June 25th along with Riven Remake, comes out on Quest 3, Quest 2, PC, and Mac on June 25th. Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble comes out on Switch June 25th. Until Then, comes out on PlayStation 5 and PC June 25th. Luigi Mansions 2 HD comes out on, on the Switch for June 28th, 27th. Sorry. Neo Sprint comes out on PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC June 27th. Uh, Tachia comes out on Switch June 27th. Spy X Anya Operation Memories comes out on PlayStations and the Switch June 28th. And then for July, uh, yeah, I'll cover these again for the July updates as well. Uh, we have Final Fantasy 14 Dawn Trail comes out on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC July 2nd. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard comes out on Mac and iOS July 7th or 2nd. First Descendant comes out on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC July 2nd. Zenless Zone Zero comes out on PC, PC, iOS, and Android June July 4th. Sorry, July. We're in the month of July for these updates right now. The Legend of Heroes Trails Through Daybreak will hit PlayStations and Switch and PC July 5th. Once Human comes out on PC July 9th, which I've been seeing some gameplay of that for on, uh, online. It looks really good. Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown will hit the Switch July 11th. Anger Foot hits PCs July 11th. Darkest Dungeons 2 comes out on PlayStation 5 and 4 July 15th. 
Aerial Knights We Never Yield, PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, July 16th. Cataclysmo comes out on the PC, July 16th. Evil v Evil, PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC, July 16th. Magical Delicacy comes out on Xbox, Switch, and PC, July 16th. Nobody Wants to Die. This is another one I saw a showcase of. This one looks uh, good. PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and PC, July 17th. Bow Path of or Bow Path of Teal Lotus comes out on the PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC July 18th. Dungeons of Hinterburg comes out on the Xbox and PC July 18th. Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn comes out on PlayStation, Xbox, PC, sorry, and PC July 18th. Nintendo World Championship NES Edition. Can you guess this one? No, it's not the PC. It's the Nintendo Switch. July 18th. Uh, Scheme. Scheme. PlayStation 5 for Xbox One, Switch, and PC comes out on July 18th. The long anticipated game EA Sports College Football will hit PlayStation 5 and Xbox on July 19th. Kunitsu Gami Path of the Goddess comes out on PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC July 19th. I'm sure I'm going to butcher this one. Ete comes out on PC July 23rd. F1 Manager 2004. 24 will hit PlayStation, Xbox, and PC July 23rd. Raw Min Food Fighter Arena hits PC July 23rd. The star named Eos, PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC July 23rd. A Ranger, a role puzzling adventure hits PC, Switch, PlayStation, PC, Switch, and the Mac July 25th. Frostpunk 2 will hit the PC July 25th. Thrasher will be on Quest 3, 2, and PC July 25th. Tokyo. Zondu EX Plus will hit Switch July 25th, and One Piece Odyssey hits Switch July 26th. And we'll cover all those um, again in July. But if you haven't already, again, make sure you go check out our last video because we talk about everything that happened at Summerfest with the uh, long-awaited announcement of the upcoming LEGO, uh, LEGO Horizons, or from War Within to Call of Duty and all that comes with it because they're doing a big update with that one um to oh what other games they, they had so many destiny 2 got covered um see now i'm, I'm drawing a blank because i had everything warhammer is coming out there's a, a big one for that um you know there's a silent hill like game coming out you have Bloomhouse Production getting into the video game world, which looks really cool. New World is having a, a new game come out, or a second version of it come out, called Aterium. Uh, then you also have uh, Assassin's Creed Shadows, which looks amazing. Uh, Flight Simulator got talked about. You also saw more about Age of Empires, uh, Civilization Seven, Batman Arkham Shadow, which... It was only coming out for the quest. It's pissing off a lot of people. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil, the 20th edition. We got to see uh, Outlaw. Is that the... I feel like I'm, I'm saying that one wrong. Yeah. Star Wars Outlaw, uh, which is causing a lot of issues as well. So there's just a lot of games we're covering over in that last one. Um, Power Rangers has a new game coming out as well. There's a new... Uh, Splinter's Fate is coming out on Switch. There's just, there's so many games, and we covered so much of it on the last one. So make sure you go check it out. And of course, don't forget, every Thursday we have a new episode of Two Guys One Game Pad along with Thursday nights. Rogwell and I get together to do our Two Guys One Game Pad game night on our respective uh, live stream platforms. Rogwell's currently on uh, Twitch. You can find me on literally Twitch, Kick, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok uh, at Cybermark Sig. Uh, we just play games for about two, three plus hours and just have fun shooting the shit. Uh, if you, we'll have an episode for Ring Rage Report coming out this either Thursday or Friday as well. Uh, probably Friday. We'll have it come out and it's going to be covering the WWE premiere live event that's taking place this weekend. Clash of the Castle over in Scotland. Um, so we'll be covering 
our predictions, speculations, along with what's been going on in WWE since the last PLE. Uh, that one will be Rago, myself, and hopefully Lane. And then hopefully, we'll see. Uh, Rago is working on a horror podcast specific or horror specific podcast uh where him and Liam will talk about all things horror movies tv show of the such uh, and they've got to interview a lot of actors in an up or in a movie that actually has released uh, but that's coming soon so you yeah, guys stay up to date with that one i believe it's called evil insight uh, but so we had tons of stuff going on but yes come check us out uh, again if you find us over on TikTok, please make sure you drop that follow because once we hit, I think it's like 500, we can go live and we will do our live um, or we will do live podcast recordings. Um, we did one last week and uh, it, in my opinion, did very well uh, for just a random night and we'll likely do it again or have done it again tonight, which will be yesterday when you watch this tomorrow. <laughs> um and we are just kind of trying to do it so where you guys get a a quicker gl- gl- glimpse into two guys one gamepad you can listen to the episodes uninterrupted as we record them and have fun um, in between the recording sessions as well so but until next time everyone uh, thank you for watching and listening make sure you hit the like the follow or sorry the like and the subscribe button to stay up to date for more and all things video game related. Again, we're trying to do this weekly. And it's likely to be a weekly update with just me. Sick, and that's fine. Uh, for the time being, it'll be that. So but until next time, everyone, thank you so much for hanging out with me and listening to all the updates. I hope you have a wonderful time. And as always, if you remember or if you can think of a game you want to hear weekly updates for, comment down below on the name of the game. And if you could let us know when the updates come out for it uh, right now world of warcraft call of duty destiny 2 hits shelves or the patch updates get released on tuesdays hence why this will be recorded on tuesday and released on wednesday uh, so yeah, but let us know but until next time everyone take care thank you so much for listening and we'll catch you on the next two guys one game Over, everyone.